my real point about this is still these are excuses to become what a statistic. How about I sum it up to you this way? Drowning is real and death is permanent. So let's keep those life jackets on, buckled, snapped, and zipped at all times today. Be careful walk around the rocks and the island today. Those that raised your hands, you know where I'm going next. Newbies, they're called Coosa River Tattoos. I am not talking ink and artwork. That is the bump scrapes and bruises that you come back with. Now typically you're going to get these tattoos from walking around a place like Moccasin Gap. It's a rocky bony island about midway through your trip. Now, I used to pause the safety brief to allow you yeah. veterans to tell the newbies the how slippery it was. But for some reason we had a hard time using G-rated terminology. Things like owl and something would come out of your mouth. And although that may describe it, let me help you use G-rated terminology. It's an algae growth that grows on the rocks here. It's right at the water line, goes to about 10, 12 feet deep, and there's just no traction. You veterans know how fast gravity's going to take you down. You newbies are going to find out. So be careful out there. I don't know why you want to endure the pain of a tattoo without at least getting some ink and artwork to show for one. Safety, the rapids out there today, do you have to paddle them? No. Are you going to paddle them? Yes. That's why you're here. But if you don't like what you see and you don't like what you hear, then don't. So let's fly back to Moxon Gap, the rocky bony island about midway through your trip. The name Moxon Gap implies it's this huge mythological place. You veterans kind of attest it's kind of a disappointing sized island, right? It's not much wider than, say, from me to the set of steps over there. And I'm telling you, if it's as long from the front of the bus to the building, I'm lying to you, all right? So pull up to Moxon Gap, right? Look on the right-hand side. That is the only Class Three rapid we have on this river. Why is it a Class Three? It has the ability to swamp an open boat such as a canoe, a john boat, a sit inside kayak without a skirt. Look left, that's a class two rapid, and like the rest of the rapids out here, it's a wide open, clear channel, easily paddled by novices, no scouting or portaging required. Now if you don't look like what if you don't like what you see on the right hand side, you don't like what you see on the left hand side, you always have the choice to drag your boat over. That's called a portage. Now you're really gonna portage those rapids today to avoid paddling them. I kinda doubt it. I think most of you can get to Mox and Gap, you're going to swell up, stand tall, and say the following words. I didn't come this far to back out now, and you're going to go for it. What happens if you go for it and you're not successful? Laugh. You're here to have a good time. Water temperature, amazing 80 degrees. Air temperature, who knows? Who cares? If it just stays overcast like this, you won't get burned up by the sun, so they appreciate it, right? Who's in the two-person kayaks this morning? Yeah, there should be about 10 hands go up. They're called divorce boats for a reason. <laughs> Can y'all work together for three or four hours? She does all the paddling. Yeah, that's what happens, all right. So usually what happens is us guys at the back of the boat barking orders at the back of you ladies' head. And we say things like, go right, go right. And if you put the paddling on the right, the boat wants to go left. So remember, laugh if you tip over today. Never ever try to stand up in swift water. What can happen to you is what's called a foot entrapment. What is that? That's where your foot gets lodged or hung up in a rock. Now does this happen? You're trying to stand up in swift water. How do you prevent it? Wear the life jacket and practice what's known as nose up and toes up. Put your nose up, your toes up, your feet out in front. And hopefully that'll help prevent what happened to the gentleman about four or five weeks ago. He's our worst broken bone accident in 20 years. Now when I got to him out there, he told me, Chris, I didn't do nose up and toes up. I said, explain to me what happened. Somehow he ended up in the water above Moxie Gap and didn't swim to the island, said, I'll just go through the right side. He was body surfing. At the last minute he attempted to stand up. His foot slipped down between two rocks, wedged just perfectly, but his upper body momentum in the current kept going. Right above the ankle, there's your visual, yeah. Nose up and toes up with your feet out front to help prevent that. You can use them like a shock absorber to rock the log and other boat will come to your aid. The final reason for the nose up toes up philosophy though is the Coosa River tattoo. It sets the padded parts of your body up to take on the tattoo, not the elbows, knees, and ankles. Hang on to your paddles. Simply put, it's going to cost you money when you get out of the river today. The number one reason that you lose the paddles is this. You weren't wearing the life jacket when you tipped over and now you had to wrestle the river. The number two reason is too busy reaching for things like cell phones, wallets, car keys, expensive eyewear, jewelry, large sums of money, little sum of money, first born, second born, iPods, iPads, dip cameras, fridge trolls, dogs, and or beer. Beer, exactly. Now for some of us, that's a little bit higher up in a rating scale. Now my point about that list is everything on that list has actually been lost at some point in time. If you didn't think like that, first born and second born, they're on the list. The kids are fine, stories for a different day. A real point about the list is just don't take it with you. 
lock things up in the vehicles. Car keys, don't lock them up in the vehicle. It is an old tattler trick, though. Try hiding it someplace on the vehicle. Just not the locking gas cap door. Look around. I know we didn't schedule as one group here today, but make some friends on the bus ride up. There is safety in numbers. Now, do you have to stay together as a group today? I'm not saying that at all. But with all puns intended, when we're out there on the water, we're all in the same boat. So do the right thing today. If you see somebody tipped over, laugh at them first, then give them an helping hand. And you'll see how that little circle of life will come back to you someday. The trip averages three to four hours in length. You take as little as long as you like, as long as you're out of the water. Let's call it by six o'clock-ish. Notice that was an ish. That's not a hard set time. I do start to worry about you as the sun starts to set. Notice I didn't say I'm coming to look for you as the sun starts to set. I am finally past those days, thanks in part to some medication. <laughs> Five o'clock somewhere. All right, my common question is how do you know that you're back here? You're going to paddle under one bridge today. If you paddle under two bridges, you're headed to Montgomery. Now, right before the second bridge, the iconic arch bridge of downtown Wetumpka is a major power line. What's unique about this power line that crosses our river landing directly through those trees, it has three orange Auburn colored balls. Auburn fans? Glory be. Now, let me show you how it's done. Alabama? Roll Tide! Now, see, I think they came ready to fight. All right? So, we're going to call this second down. See if you can get some more players off the bench a little louder, a little prouder. Here we go. Auburn? Warrior. Now let me show you how it's done. Alabama. <laughs> Roll Tide! Now that still was weak on both fronts, right? <laughs> oh, no, you're not a battle now. Make a choice. Make a choice. All right? My elbow goes like this. You gotta make a choice, all right? So fourth down and one for all the marbles. Here we go. Loud and proud. Auburn. Warrior. Alabama. Roll Tide! I'm gonna barely give that one to Alabama. I almost gave it to you. <laughs> now, I can't change the color of the balls no matter what kind of a fan you are. Those balls are orange. Here's another nuance of information. That's the only power line with balls. Now, I'm going to pause this safety brief, all right? I'm going to pause it, right? And then I'm going to try to do this with a straight face. So just bear with me. I had a lady, I'm full of these stories. She came in about four weeks ago. She says, Chris, I think you should really explain to all the future customers that the balls aren't very big. Like size really matters. If it's the only power line with balls, right, who cares how big they are? And I do it with a straight face. Yeah. All right, play. All right. And some other signs that you're back, all right? There's a wooden dock at the bottom of the hill. There's PVC pipe that looks like a train track. It's what we pull the boats up out of the water on. There's also our infamous flip-flop tree where the lone flip-flop is hanging up waiting for the lost flip-flops to return. Why am I giving you all this extra information about the takeout? We don't have a sign. And you veterans know we don't need a sign. Newbies, if you get directly under the power line with the balls, you miss the takeout from me to that set of steps behind you over there. Now, you'll actually walk up the hill from this direction. Please bring the life jackets. Drop them off in the gray wash tub in front of the American flag, in front of the bathrooms, in front of those drying racks. If you've lost a boat, a life jacket, or a paddle, you do have to pay for it. Please leave it on. Here